All right, so this is our chapter on what I call signals and system basics. And in this sequence of videos, we have about 18 here, we're gonna really focus on what we call signal classification. As a whole, what we're gonna be doing in this chapter after providing kind of like a little overview here is looking at signals specifically, and there's things we need to do there. We're gonna talk about classification, all these properties of signals that signals may or may not have. We'll get into those. And then we'll talk about some operations on signals like time shifting, amplitude scaling, time reversal, so different operations that we need to know about, and then different signal models, basically very common signal types that we encounter, things like unit step functions, unit ramp functions, impulse functions, things like that. And then we're basically gonna repeat the same thing with systems. We need to introduce what systems are, define them, and then talk about how we classify them in terms of what properties they may or may not have. So this introduction slide kind of says what I just said there, really getting into just the basics of signals and systems. So we need to very rigorously define what a signal is and what a system is. Talk about signal properties. So there's a huge list of properties that signals may or may not have. And that's really what this 18 video sequence works through, all the different signal properties. In the next playlist, the next part, we'll get into the types and then the uh, playlist and part after that will be the signal operation. So a lot of just kind of core definitions to get through right now. So talking about signal and system basics, what is a signal? For us, a signal is just some function and it can be a function of one or more variables. Most of the time in this class, it is a function of one variable and that variable is continuous time t. So most of the time we're dealing with x of t, y of t, h of t, things like that. But you could have more complicated signals. If you're doing communication systems that have multiple antennas, you might have space and time as your signals. You might be talking about time domain signals, but across multiple antennas. So there's not only a time dimension, but a space dimension that you have to quantify as well. So things can get a lot more complicated. The general definition is a, function of one or more variables, but in this class, it's almost always going to be a one-dimensional function of continuous time, t, okay? So that's what a signal is. And then what is a system? Well, a system, very generally, is just some entity or object that manipulates signals. So there's typically some input signal, usually denoted by x of t. The system we draw very notionally as this block and it is described in a variety of ways, and we're gonna spend you know, a ton of time describing those different ways it can be described. And then this block does something to the input signal to yield a new signal. So it's some entity that takes the signals, does something to them, manipulates them, and yields new signals. So again, lots of different applications, communication systems, radar systems, control systems, electrical circuits, all of these fall into the category of a system. Just as a very simple example, an electrical circuit has some input. The components of the circuit, the resistors, the capacitors, the inductors, modify that input signal. And then you can observe the output signal voltage as a modified version of the input. So in that case, this block right here is really kind of a, a series of resistors, capacitors, inductors, and things like that this box, this system could be much more complicated. In a radar system, what happens inside this box could be very complicated. You could have analog to digital converters, you could have advanced algorithms, all kinds of things could be in that system. Most of the time in this class, we're gonna keep these systems fairly simple. One way of describing them will be via this quantity H of T, which is what's called the impulse response of the system. And we'll get into exactly what that is later, but it's a time domain way of describing how the system modifies the input signal. The other way that we'll look at signals and systems is in the frequency domain. So notice down here, this is a time domain signal, but this is a frequency domain signal. So another useful way of looking at signals and systems is what we call a frequency domain characterization of them. And that's what this block down here represents. There's an input signal again, but it's a frequency domain signal. The system itself is described in the frequency domain and the output is described in the frequency domain. So still an input signal, a system that manipulates and modifies it to yield a new signal, just 
performed in a different domain. All right, so those are our basic definitions of what a signal is, what a system is. The subsequent videos are really gonna focus on signals now. We're gonna get into properties and classification of signals. If I hand you a signal, what can you tell me about the signal? Is it continuous time or discrete time? Is it analog or digital? There's all these words we need to define that describe characteristics of a signal.